Hi, my name is Abhishek, Abhishek Sinha, and uh, today we are going to be talking about data science ethics. So, why study data science ethics, right? I think data science slowly is gaining footage in every single aspect of your life from the manner in which admissions are taken into school from the algorithms that go behind all these dating applications from the credit rating systems that banks use to grant loans to individuals from the ads that you see every other day and from the recommendations that you gain on youtube for example all of these are aspects in which data science affect your life in every single manner that you choose to lead it this becomes extremely crucial because as time is moving on data science is becoming more and more ingrained within the life that you experience every day. Given that, it becomes extremely important for you to understand how to use data, how other people use your data, and what are the ethics and concerns that surround that sort of usage of data. And this is all the more important for students that uh, and individuals that want to learn about data science and implement data science every day. And I cannot stress the importance of data science ethics enough in that aspect. With that said, uh, a good data science needs to understand the ethical issues surrounding the data they obtain or use, the algorithms they employ, and its impact on people. And this is true just for the reasons that I mentioned above, because it's so consequential that you have to ensure that you're treating it right. You're treating the data right, you're treating the people that you obtained it for, uh, from right as well. What we're gonna discuss now is what we mean by ethics, what ethics surround data and uh, subtopics there would include things like informed consent, things like intellectual property. And following that, we're gonna talk about ethics surrounding implementations of that data, such as biased algorithms, the fairness, the reproducibility of algorithms, and so on. So let's start with what is data, right? And why do people, uh, sorry, what is ethics, right? And why do people follow uh, and make an ethical choice? And what exactly is an ethical choice? I think ethics are slightly complex. They're not a sing there's no singular definition for it. There's a, there's a multitude of things that cover what is ethical and what is not. And I think what becomes really important over there is to uh, understand the notion of morality and what is the right thing to do. The right thing to do can often include a different set of criteria that you would accommodate in different situations. It could be what is legal for you to do, what is... Uh, ethical in terms of uh, morality, so the societal morality that you, uh, you encounter and live by in every aspect of your life. It could be in terms of the consequences of your decision and whether it's going to negatively impact someone or not. It could also be in terms of the duties and uh, responsibilities that you in your capacity have and need to follow. This makes ethics quite the complex subject and something that every single person should spend uh, a decent amount of time trying to understand and nuance through. Data ethics are highly influenced often enough by the consequences that uh, occur as a result of previous data uh, usage, right? And we think uh, that's while that's uh, unfortunate, that is something that needs to be considered and needs to be uh, taken into uh, consideration in retrospect as well, because sometimes uh, there's no other way to find out whether the impact of something is going to be good or not, other than literally seeing the impact in, its, in all of its viscerality. And that's another part of this problem, right? You don't know what the right thing is until after you've done it. And that's also why data ethics and the study of it is so important. Let's talk about ethics that surround data now. Right? I think there's a couple of core principles that uh, are involved in uh, data and go that do govern ethics surrounding data. Autonomy, informed consent, beneficence and non-maleficence. What do these mean, right? Autonomy refers to the right that every individual has to control their own data and uh, the data that, have, that has been taken from them. Informed consent refers to uh, 
the explicit consen consent being obtained from individuals whose data you're using. Beneficence refers to the right that individuals have that the data that's been obtained from them only be used for their benefit. And non-maleficence is essentially what goes hand in hand with that, right? That it's not used for harm. This brings us to subparts of that, right? So data collection. How do you how do you ensure that that you're consenting to every single aspect of data being collected? And how do you more importantly not let that data be collected if you don't want it to, right? Because data is being collected all the time. It's being collected from cameras, from accelerometers when you're driving your car, from social media, from click-throughs, from the cookies that are collected on the, di the different websites that you visit, from the cell phone that you use every day that report the locations of where you're going. What's really important over here and how you can control things is by actively making sure that you're involved in the process of this and you're actively giving approvals slash taking away approvals when you don't want to provide the data. This is true for any of these aspects as well, right? So for example, when you talk about cookies and websites, more often than not, every single website has uh, the option for you to clear cookies and for uh, you to not allow cookies to be collected in the first place. This might often limit functionality, but this is a trade-off that you would make in that circumstance. In the same manner that uh, your location being uh, reported is something that you have control over to a certain extent through your uh, phone application and is something that you should probably understand and read up on before you actively indulge in the location services of your phone as well. With that being said, what exactly is informed consent, right? Informed consent refers to people being able to understand what is being done, people being able to voluntarily say that they are opting into that sort of experiment slash data collection. And most importantly, people having the right to withdraw that consent at any point of time. These are three aspects that uh, are involved in ensuring that the consent that you've obtained or the consent that you've given is informed in any manner. What's important to note over here that uh, this informed consent is not necessarily required for the ordinary conduct of business uh, for certain um, corporations slash organizations. And this includes the, the things and the aspects of data that are being used uh, for the necessary functionality of that organization uh, slash that service in however they provide that service. So this includes things such as A to B testing, uh, which is of always allowed so that, um, you know, different services can test whether some uh, new feature that they wanna launch, for example, is better or not and is going to work or not. And it's used all the time in different websites such as Facebook. But often enough, this is a very fine line and uh, it's very difficult to define what the ordinary conduct of business is, especially for these large companies that tend to change what uh, the goal of their company is slash the mission statement of their company is from time to time and are fairly dynamic in uh, the kind of work that they do. An example for that, right? Facebook's mood manipulation experiment. So in 2012, researchers at Facebook and at Cornell manipulated the newsfeed of some Facebook users, which is to say they showed some users more positive articles and some more negative articles. And what they noticed was that the people with the positive articles posted more positive articles themselves on Facebook, while the people with more negative ones posted more negative articles which is to say they demonstrated emotional contagion, that the emotion that you uh, display towards a person is what often impacts them and uh, spreads into their life itself. Now, is this legal given what we know about uh, ethics so far? Because what Facebook said and uh, this is what I guess made it legal, is that it's it was important for them to conduct this test because it 
is part of them understanding how to stay relevant and engaging as much as possible to the people that consume the services and given that it was a big part of understanding how people respond to different types of content stimuli uh, whether it's positive or negative whether it's from friends and so on and that they did not unnecessarily uh, collect any sort of data and all data was stored securely and was only collected with specific purpose in mind such as this research initiative this is a demonstration of the kind of wishy-washy extent to which the ordered ordinary uh, conduct of business can be stretched, right? Uh, because it's very difficult to define whether this is actually part of their ordinary conduct of business or not. Was this ethical then? So Adam D.I. Kramer, a Facebook social psychologist said, at the end of the day, the actual impact on the people in the experiment was a minimal amount of statistically detected. And having written and designed the experiment themselves, they could tell that their goal wasn't to upset anyone, but at the same time, the research benefits of the paper might not have justified all that anxiety. And this becomes a very crucial statement over here. And it's important to understand this, right? Because what this demonstrates is that while it was part of, it was justified as the ordinary conduct of business, some of the individuals within the organization itself might not have been too comfortable with it, uh, nor might they have understood whether this is completely ethical and part of their mission statement or not. Informed consent is often not treated as well as it possibly should which is to say that's often buried in the fine print. You'll see a huge terms and conditions page wherein uh, you'd have to sign that to just go through. And people tend to ignore this, right? I'm sure uh, you have done so as well when you've downloaded an application and seen a couple of requirements that you need to go through before uh, moving on using that application. People just tend to skip it, agree and move on. And this is often how informed consent is just taken without really uh, people getting informed themselves. And informed consent is buried in the fine print and it's going to be difficult for people to understand how the data is gonna be used given that they haven't bothered to you know, really go through what that is. So these are a couple of concerns therein, right? Informed consent is buried in the fine print. Data is often collected first, the experiment comes later and how the data once collected is gonna be used is very difficult to control, right? Another example. So OkCupid experimented with its customers a while back, which what they did was they took the compatibility of uh, scores of people, they adjusted them, told some people that they were high and told some people that they were low when they were actually the opposite and just saw what uh, how this played out. In the same manner, another experiment was when they suppressed the photographs of some users so that they could not see the, see the pictures of other potential people they would meet. And what they noticed was that uh, people had longer conversations until photos were restored. Is it right for them to do something of this sort? Was it ethical? Was it legal? These are questions that are asked all the time, but most importantly, you need to understand and remember that every single day you use the internet, you're subject to experiences, experiments, and uh, tests all the time. And you've probably been through hundreds of them at any point of time uh, without even noticing. This includes things like Google rankings. This includes things like Facebook A and B tests uh, and so on. Intentionally lying to you such as this one would be something that some people would definitely consider edging the line and being slightly socially unacceptable. Intellectual property. Intellectual property is extremely important of an idea because it's the protected, 
property of individuals and it's important to understand what it is so especially so that you don't violate it uh, here and there especially when you don't have the intent to do so patents only pro protect implementations and not ideas and it's important to remember that this means that the idea, for example, of a social network itself is not patented, but the implementation in the form of Facebook is. Artistic expression can be copyrighted. You can gain the exclusive legal rights to print, publish, perform, film or record and authorize others to do the same. Derivative work can be created with permission. You need to cite its originator though in which is how you give credit to the originator, the owner. These are just a couple of other examples in which uh, data has been used in relatively uh, shadier reasons without and uh, probably not, and where ethics ran, cut the edge uh, in terms of whether this was an ethical thing to do or not, such as Cambridge Analytica, as everyone I'm sure remembers, uh, the Facebook uh, machine learning data science group that used analytics and that was used during the election campaign.